That's right, folks. It's a Ford Mach-E, first edition. Today, I'm going to take a look at this car and let you know what I think. Right, so the first thing you need to understand is that this is not going to be a full in-depth review of the car. I'm just going to give you my impressions. We'll take it out for a drive. I have someone I need to thank. My good friend Ken Bacor <laughs> Hi guys. has How had the you? car for what, uh, almost a week? Yeah, about five days. He asked me if I wanted to check out the car and I, I couldn't pass up an opportunity. I mean, he was very gracious to let me take a look at the Porsche Taycan yeah. last summer. That was a blast. Yeah, that was a lot yeah. of fun. So, my neck still hurts from that. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to take a look at the Mach-E and uh, Let's see what this thing's all about. The first thing you might notice about the Mach-E is that it doesn't have any door handles. Instead, it has these little black bars that you pull on and a button that you press to unlock the door. It's fairly intuitive. As someone who used to own a Model X, I recognize these things. They're called icebreakers. The Mach-E has four of them, and it helps to open the doors when you unlock it, and it also helps in the winter months when your doors might get frozen shut. And as you might expect, the Mach-E also has a power lift gate. Press the button to open it. When you're ready to close it, press the button. You can also hold it to set the height. Let's take a look at the trunk and the Mach-E. And underneath the load floor, you'll see here that there's actually not a lot of room. Now, again, the competitor of this is the Model Y, so you don't have that lower trunk area. But they do include a tire repair kit and an inflator, so that's a nice little bonus. And I should point out, this is the level two charger that they include. And I'll tell you, they really did copy Tesla on that. And I mean, it's almost the same size. That way, you've got your J1772 because that's what these cars take. And they also include the NEMA 1450 adapter. And it's got the same kind of plug arrangement that Tesla does. So you pull this out and put that in there. So obviously Ford has taken a lot of cues from Tesla in terms of their level two charger. There's a 12 volt plug on this side and some grocery hooks. Other than that, the load floor does adjust in two different positions, so you can lower it down or a little higher and it stays up here. And you have some D-rings down here in the bottom, and then you got your latch arrangements here for the seats for the kids. But I don't see a release here in the back to drop the front seats, so I think you have to kind of reach in here and just kind of do that. Whereas the Model Y here, of course, on this side, you can just pull the latch and the seats fold down. Now, one thing you'll notice is that they do include a privacy shelf in here. Now, Ken tells me he's been driving the car for like a week now, and he tells me this thing flaps around all the time. In most cases, you probably want to take this out. And I know some people have been asking for something like this on a Model Y, but honestly, with the privacy glass, I don't think it's that big of a deal. They do include it. It comes out pretty easily. There's just a couple little, uh, I can get it undone here. There we go, like that, and it just pops off. And you can take it out if you don't really need it. Not the end of the world, though, if you don't, uh, if you don't have it on a Model Y. I'm sure there's some third-party people that probably come out with something like that, but there you go. You have a privacy shelf. Let's take a look at the charge port. Push on this side, it just pops open. So here on the top, you have your standard J1772 connector. And for CCS charging, you open up the little flap on the bottom and that exposes the extra two DC pins. So it's kind of a nice little weather seal. On this side, you have a button that you can press to immediately start charging the car. Otherwise, you can set it up inside the car to start charging whenever you want, but it's nice to have a convenient button there to start it. Otherwise, close it up and you're done. I wanna take a moment here and just talk about EV car design in general. Now everyone knows putting a battery in the floor of the car is the only way to do a proper EV. Mach-E does not disappoint in that fact. But there is something else that I think that's super important. And you know, car companies, if you're not doing this, you're either lazy, you're a bean counter, or you just don't care about your customers. And that is taking the advantage of doing proper car design and packaging and putting a front trunk in your car. And the Mach-E has it. Tesla's done it, these guys have done it. Ford gets it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here is the front trunk on the Mach-E. If you compare it, it's about the same size as what you find on the Model Y. Maybe not quite as deep this way, but you do have a divider in here which you can pop out if you, uh, if you don't want to use that. There is a drain here at the bottom, so if you want to do the tailgate thing, throw a bunch of ice in, you can certainly do that. There are two built-in cup holder areas here. Now on this side, you have your winter washer fluid, and then of course you have the Duragare button to open the front trunk if somebody's caught inside, and a light. I can't really show it on camera, but there is a seal here on the bottom of the hood that closes, so it seals up this whole area and tries to keep as much of the dirt and debris out. It's a nice design. They've, uh, they've actually thought this through, so I want to commend the uh, Ford engineers for doing a great job in packaging their power electronics in such a way and imitating what Tesla's doing to give us a usable front space.
Right, so I'm sitting inside the Mach-E first edition, fully loaded. I think retail price on this is about $74,000, $75,000 Canadian. It is not cheap, but it's fairly well appointed. I had an opportunity to drive it around the block here a couple of times, and it definitely feels heavy. I'm not used to sitting in, a, <laughs> in an SUV up off, off the ground, so it's a little bit of an adjustment for me coming from the Model 3. But so far, it feels solid. It's very well put together. Fit and finish is actually very, very good. There's only one little place, you know, on the door seal, and I'll show you that, guys, here. The nice thing about the interior on this car is that uh, don't rock the boat. This is for existing customers that are a little trepidatious about switching over to EV, so you don't want to, you know, rock the boat too much and then give them a familiar layout, but add a bunch of tech stuff. So there's two screens on this car. You've got the large you know, vertical screen, you've got the little instrument cluster in front of you. And, uh, you know, the buttons are kind of kept down to a minimum. You got the usual things on the steering wheel and you've got the things sort of, uh, you know, now it's binging away on me. <laughs> and then you get them on the doors. And uh, of course, as a Tesla owner, first thing you get in the car is you want to pull down on the drive stock to put it into drive. You know, there's a knob here on the uh, center console that you have to switch. So that's a small adjustment. Let's talk about the software in the car, because I think this is probably the most important thing about this vehicle, other than the fact that it's electric, because let's face it, software is a big deal. Let's see what Ford has come up with. Okay, yeah, it's being at me. So I have to press the uh, start button to get the car to start up. And then you've got, uh, of course, it's making a lot of different noises and the AC is gonna come on here. I want this to be a little bit on the low side here. And then you can just kind of do this on the screen to adjust your temperature. All right, let's talk about the center console first because this is where uh, things get really interesting. Now on the top, you've got some kind of map system and I have not been able to find in here where to turn on satellite view. So you'll have to apologize my ignorance on this car. Pressing the Mustang icon brings up, you know, you know, you got your phone pairing in your uh, various different apps and, you know, navigation and so on and so forth. So if you want navigation, you just tap on that, it comes up. You also have these little cards here at the bottom that you can swipe. So while you're in this mode, you can get at uh, various different things. So you got a trip computer, you can turn that on and off if you like. Uh, two different trip computers here on the screen. Let's go back here. Uh, Built-in owner's manual, that's very Tesla-ish of course. Your Bluetooth, the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, kind of the de rigueur things that you need these days. Uh, tapping this icon, which is the car icon here in the top left-hand mode, brings up the drive modes. This car has three different drive modes. You have Engage, Whisper, and unbridled. I had a rough opportunity to test these different things. You get one pedal drive, which is really nice. Matter of fact, if you turn it off, you get no regen whatsoever, and this car will just coast forever. It's very, it's weird. Um, I'm not used to that. I like regen, so I just kind of leave that on. This one's really weird. You got a propulsion sound. I have limited testing on this. By the way, each one of these um, functions has a little eye icon. So if you tap on that, it brings up and it gives you an explanation. So the propulsion sound, is generated to enhance the driving experience. Uh, you know, maybe if you're coming from a gas car. But... I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay, Siri, thank you. <laughs> All right, turning that on gives you uh, car engine noises. I don't like that, turn that off. This is interesting, here's the camera. Look at this, you get a wide angle camera here in the back, but this is the big one here. You got a bird's eye view. This is something that uh, people have been asking about for a long time. I wish we could have this on Teslas. Um, so you got different modes. You can turn things on and off. So right there, those are your uh, ultrasonic sensors, of course. You've got a front sensor, and then of course your bird's eye camera. And as you uh, tap on each one of these icons, you can kind of zoom in to different corners. So if you're getting uh, close to something, you can zoom in on that. There is a park assist mode. I haven't tested that yet, but apparently it will do uh, automatic parking. Again, dependent on trim levels. So don't expect to see this on every car that you get. Let's go back to the home screen, just tap on that. And then uh, you got your parking option. So there's your park aid. Uh, you have access, which allows you to do things like uh, open your lift gate. So I press that, and of course the lift gate is opening right now. Let's close the gate. Now, Ford has been making a lot of noise about driver assistance. Of course, Tesla is talking about autopilot a lot, but Ford has their own. So you have auto hold and traction control, but if you go into additional settings, watch out. Oh my gosh, look at all of the different settings we have in this car. And it just goes on and on and on. The software is a little slow in some cases, depending where you are. Yes, you have different driver profiles, so you can add a profile. And then here under driver assistance, you're gonna see a whole myriad of different things. So you have speed limit assist, lane keeping system, collision avoidance, scroll up, rear camera delay, blind spot, cross traffic alert, auto hold, traction control. I mean, it goes on and on and on. There's more down here. So if we go under vehicle, loading, loading, here we go. Tons and tons and tons of options. You know what? This is one thing I noticed on my Lincoln when I had it is that it had lots of menus, but it was always buried in this little tiny screen. You had to use the little controls to get at it. 
this is nice it's very welcome now ford tells us that they will be able to do software updates in uh, due time over the air so i'm welcome to see that i think more car manufacturers need to do what tesla is doing and i'm glad that ford's doing it too so you know obviously you can see it just goes on and on and on there's lots and lots and lots of settings in here there's your system updates let's just see if there's a system update Okay, system's up to date. All right, let's take a moment here and talk about this volume knob. This is very controversial. For whatever reason, they decided to stick this on. This is not part of the screen. It's actually stuck on there, and its sole purpose is volume. Pressing the button in the middle turns on your radio or your entertainment system. I'm not going to do that. I don't want any copyright issues. But it's clicky, and all it does is that there's a little raceway on the inside that actually touches the screen and emulates your finger turning. Someone at Ford decided that this is a volume knob, and that is it, period. There's no going back. Even though you have volume knobs here, you have a big one down here. Some people like it. I think it's a wasted space. There's a wasted opportunity here to be able to do things. You're permanently married to having this thing being a volume knob. And then down here, you have your climate control, so you can press auto. And then, you know, you have your seat controls, your seat warmers, uh, heated steering wheel, of course. You got your fan, your max speed. This is very Tesla-esque. Just press this, and of course, you can set your temperatures whichever way you want. So the HVAC system, very well laid out. It's well thought out. Nothing to complain about here. Here's the center console, as I was saying, this is the shifter knob. You know, as a Tesla owner, you're always looking for the shifter over here, but that's not where it's at, it's over here. So you just basically turn this knob. Right now it's actually locked. So when you're in the park mode right now, you can't turn this. Turn on the car. Now I can actually put it into a different gear. So there's reverse, there's your drive, your neutral and your drive. And some of the stuff on the screen will change. So there it is, I'm in reverse now. And so the camera comes up, you put it in park, it goes back there. You have an emergency parking brake here, pull on that and you can hear it go, put it into position and that releases it center console storage you have two cup holders here some space here there's another shelf on the bottom and of course you can lift this up and you got some space to put your valuables in there there's a 12 volt socket in the inside right there which is nice any sign of usb no i don't see any usb in there there's probably some usb like i said this is just a quick overview of the car instrument cluster mm, you know i'm not one for one of those things but you know some people want to see that now this little device right here this is the driver monitoring system for their lane keep assist uh, tesla is going to be using you know the little camera here above the uh, rear view mirror but uh, ford's got this little infrared thing i think i don't know all the details on that but that's what this little doodad is for and of course if you're cross shopping you're looking at a model y so guess what this does it has almost as large if not almost the same size rear glass above the passengers and the drivers as the model y does now here in the center console you got a spot to put your sunglasses and you got your controls and of course home link is built in yes ford has built it uh, into the car it's no extra cost as far as i know you know you got your mirrors right so all in all i think this is a very well put together package you know if the model y didn't exist and you're looking for a crossover i think this would be the car to look, take a look at you know as a tesla owner yes i'm biased i admit it i'm a fan i prefer the tesla way of doing things but but Ford, I think, has a real winner on their hands with this car. Now, if you can get past the Mustang name, and I know that's upset a lot of people, but let's just call it a Mach-E. I think that's more palatable to a lot of people. But I think they're onto something here. If the F-150 Lightning is as good as this, I think they're going to have a real winner on their hands. They just got to convert those pickup truck guys because they're a little different crowd. All right, so let's take the Mach-E for a drive. Now I have to put the unit into drive mode. And then we'll just, uh, let me see here if I can bring up my nav system. Not that I really need it or anything, but I'm gonna bookmark where I am. So the first impressions is driving this car compared to mine. Obviously, I'm sitting in a crossover, an SUV, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm higher up off the ground. So the center of gravity certainly does feel different than my Model 3. Got a big hood, which I'm not used to. Uh, I used to have a Model X, but of course that slopes right off. So you, uh, you actually never end up seeing it. So this feels a little different. In many ways, I mean, not so long ago, I used to own a Lincoln MKC, which was a small SUV, about the same size as this car. So this is kind of coming back to me. It kind of feels kind of the same way. This is a very nice interior. I have no complaints about this. Yes, it's a little more traditional. We're used to, you know, the Tesla simplicity, but this is well thought out. It's well laid out. The screen's within reach. The little instrument cluster, well, I don't really need that technically. I'd rather have it up here, but they've decided they put that there. You got a nice black uh, liner across the whole car, which, um, you know, makes it feel a little less airy than, say, the Teslas because, you know, they use the gray liner. Um, but I, I like it. it. It's a little more reminiscent of my uh, Model X. Rearview mirror is actually pretty good compared to the Model uh, Y, which has a very small 
slim little rear view mirror i'm actually seeing pretty good out of this thing i don't know if, i think it's um, auto dimming so the first thing you'll notice when you get in this car is how quiet it is they've done a remarkable job on sound deadening yeah you can barely hear it and the motors don't make that much noise again uh what mode am i in here let's take a look here i'm in unbridled mode um i'm in a residential neighborhood so i'm not going to step on it i'll go and find a road over here and we'll uh We'll put it in, we'll see what happens. But if I put it in whisper mode, okay, so I felt a change in the drivetrain. Felt like the regen got a little different. It's hard to it's hard to describe. Let's try engage. Let's try what that mode does. By the way, each one of these drive modes, when you tap on it, changes what you see here in the instrument cluster. So right now in engage mode, the instrument cluster changes so that the battery meter shows up more along the bottom. And in whisper mode, it uh, changes the screen. So now the battery meter is off to the side and it just shows me a percentage. And in unbridled mode, oh yeah, I just felt the drivetrain change there again. And the graphics change. On the screen, you do have a speed limit sign. So it actually is reading the speed limits. I don't know if that's just camera based or it's GPS based. I think it's probably camera based. All right, we're gonna go on a road here and we're gonna punch it and see what it does. We're in unbridled mode. And it's it's pretty good pickup. I mean, it's not a performance Model 3 or Model Y, that's for sure. But more than enough power to get you in or out of trouble, depending on which way you look at it. Let's see here. Do I have driver assist mode turned on? Let's go to driver assistance and see if I can figure out how to use this. So right now it's set to adaptive cruise control. But if I turn on intelligent cruise control with lane centering, let's see here. Here's uh, speed. There we go. And let's press this button. Or, no, there it is. There's a lane. Lane keeping system is on. So let's see what this does. So here in the screen, I'm seeing a blue bubble around the car. And it's saying, hold on to the steering wheel. But if I just you do the Tesla thing, and I just keep it here in the bottom, let's see what happens. Car is speeding up all by itself, just to match the current speed limit. So far, it feels like autopilot. If I just pull in the steering wheel, so yeah, the steering wheel has, it's, it's not quite as stiff as what Tesla does. Like in the Tesla, you can definitely feel there's a resistance before it actually disengages. This one, I can put slight, slight pressure on it and I can feel the car's already drifting, but it's bringing me back in the middle of the lane. So that's quite nice. Now, if I just jerk on it, will it disengage? It's not disengaging. Oh, that's interesting. Again, folks, remember, I am not familiar with this car 100%. I don't know the capabilities of the lane keeping in the assistance mode, so don't judge. This is just the first look at this car. But so far, it's um, it's doing quite well. The car is certainly maintaining the speed limit right now. I have not told it to go over or under. It's just stay at the current speed limit and it's doing its thing. Uh, I just got a warning on the screen. It says, keep hands on the steering wheel. Well, my hands were on the steering wheel, so maybe it needs to see up here. This is the... Uh, the driver monitoring thing so maybe if i just put both hands up here maybe it'll keep it happy and if i just disengage the lane keeping lane keeping system is now off i didn't get an audible chime though so pressing that button by mistake you could probably get mixed up in the sense that you wouldn't know it was actually turned off so certainly yeah it's not working now so if i turn it on what's it doing lane keeping system on i went off the road there for a second and yeah it is yeah it's not it was weird it was veering for that truck so there seems to be some kind of subtle thing in there as to when it picks up the lines or when it doesn't or detects the hand so um if you're going to use it read the manual unbridled propulsion sound let's turn that on and see what that does i don't know how it can enhance the driving experience but oh that's that's better pickup. Can you hear that? All right, there's some kind of artificial noise. I don't know if it's a gasoline engine noise or what it is, but I'm, I'm definitely hearing something. Yeah. I don't know, not for me, turning that off. So I've entered an address in the navigation screen and here on the little screen, I've got my directions on there. And of course, if I go back, yeah, there we go. Again, I have not been able to find where the satellite mode is. Press that, you can see your uh, your map. Oh yeah, the driver assistance 
just kept me back in the lane. I went over that white line a little bit because I wasn't paying attention. Uh -huh. And it brought me back. So that's nice. And that was without the lane keeping system on. And then you got a maximize button where it makes the uh, navigation system a little bigger. Let's go back and uh, press north, 3, 3D. And these buttons are not very intuitive on the navigation system as trying to zoom back in and zoom back out. There we go. Now, with me fiddling with these buttons, I've noticed that I don't have lane keeping on, but I do have the lane departure. I think maybe that's what they call it. And I could feel a little rumble when I'm getting close to the lines and stuff. And at one point back there, it actually brought me back in. So their safety system that they're using is, is actually doing a pretty decent, pretty decent job as far as I'm concerned. Well, as I said earlier, this is not a full in-depth review of this car. I'll leave that to the experts. This is my first impressions of this car. But I'll say this, if you're a Ford customer and you wanna be brand loyal and you want an electric car, you will not be disappointed with this. Matter of fact, if I was not into Tesla at all and I still had my Ford, I would probably forgive their prior sins and actually take a look at this car because this is the market that people want. They want crossovers. This thing is really well built. The fit and finish is great. The software has lots of promise. The performance is decent. Ken tells me the range is really good. The, the watt hour efficiency here in Canada is running about with the warm temperatures right now, about 180. He plugged it into Electrify Canada and he pulled, what was it, 125 kilowatts, something like that. So no slouch. You know, even the fact that we don't have the supercharger network necessarily for Ford, the third party market for third party chargers for fast DC charging is growing like crazy. So if you're getting one of these cars, the time is good. And uh, you know, even though this is the first edition, it's fully loaded, uh, you know, the lower end versions are coming, what, uh, just under 60 can now? So take a look at it. Again, I just want to congratulate the guys at Ford. They did an exceptional job on this car. There's nothing not to like. And if the F-150 Lightning pickup is as good as this, wow, I think they're really gonna change the market. Again, I'm a Cybertruck guy, that's what I want. But anyways, clapping off to Ford on this one. I really like this car. I can't wait to drive it again. Anyways, that's it for today. Make sure you uh, like, share, and subscribe on the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Take it easy.